Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm so happy to be here with you. It's a pleasure and it's a privilege, honestly. My name is Dr. Arnold Nirenberg. I'm a, I've been a licensed clinical psychologist in the state of California for over 46 years. And I've been in my profession for about 50 years. So it's my intention to bring to you very vital information that will influence you and your loved ones for a lifetime. So it's not just to bring you something for right now, but for a lifetime. The title of today's presentation is Super Health. Super Health, the physical, psychological, and spiritual dimensions. Now, there's no such thing as being healthy if you're eating unhealthy foods. You can't be healthy if you're breathing unhealthy air. And you can't be healthy if you're having unhealthy thoughts. So what I'm going to talk to you is how to get really the superfoods so you can achieve super health and your loved ones can achieve super health. And how to really monitor and make sure you're getting good air and there's a way to do that. And then how to have thoughts that are healthy thoughts. And then these thoughts will also affect you psychologically, bring you super health, but it affects you physically, and it's also going to affect you spiritually. Now, right now we're in the pandemic. Uh, everybody's quite frightened of the uh, coronavirus. So the best thing you can do is to build up your immune system so that you're less likely to be devastated by it, even if you, got, even if you came in contact with the virus. But I need to set as a stage for this to let you know that I am not an MD. I'm a licensed clinical psychologist and I'm an MD. And this is really outside my range of what's called outside the range of competence. So I've just studied this on my own. This is all self-study for about 15 to 20 years. And I brought that knowledge to myself, my family, and to my patients. But I always am required to tell you that anything I tell you about your physical health uh, that to consult your physician. Uh, often they don't know about the natural approaches. I'm going to be talking mostly about natural, but I'll be talking about some allopathic as well. Now, to strengthen your immune system, we have living within us billions, trillions of microorganisms, healthy bacteria. Bacteria, it's called a symbiotic relationship. They survive by living in us, and we survive by having them with us. Interesting thing is, there's more of them than there are of us. So we look, we counted our total cells and how many of them, they outnumber us. You have bacteria such as the bifidus, acidophilus, and many others. And it seems that some of the, some of the and they're called uh, probiotics. And so you can be getting probiotics. There's probiotics you can take for your gut, for your immune system, for your heart, up your throat, your mouth your liver, it seems that some of these little creatures that we live harmoniously with uh, gravitate towards certain areas in our body. So the first thing you want to talk about is how to strengthen your immune system. Number one, get your probiotics. You can get that from natural foods, uh, yogurt, kimchi, any fermented foods, sauerkraut, uh, this is uh, kefir. There are many wonderful probiotics you can have. You can even get fermented garlic. It's delicious. But you can also take probiotic pills. There's all types of probiotic pills you could be taking. So that will strengthen your immune system. And we'll, so if you even contacted the virus, you have the defense to fight that off. And certainly you want to keep your immune system strong by getting adequate sleep, adequate rest. Now, your psychological immune system can have an effect on your physical immune system. If you're very stressed out, it's going to weaken your immune system. Stress weakens the immune system. Now, certain times, exercise, which is enormously good for us, enormously healthy, but when you've done a vigorous exercising, there's about a two-hour window afterwards where you have a compromised immune system, so you especially want to be careful 
where you are and the kind of nutrients you take at that time afterwards to strengthen your immune system because you're more prone to illnesses that about a couple hour window afterwards. Now, the other uh, ways of strengthening your immune system, I'm going to in fact I have some of the things here. What one of ones? There's two things. One's to strengthen the immune system. The other is to kill pathogens. There are natural ways to kill viruses, not, viruses and, and uh, yeast and harmful bacteria. Well, that's about killing viruses. Garlic will actually kill viruses. Garlic, this this is a, a magic. This is magic medicine. Garlic actually kill the viruses. It also removes the plaque off your arteries. It's the plaque building up on the arteries that's, that's prone to rupture that cause heart attacks and strokes. This will remove the plaque from your arteries and kill harmful pathogens in your body. The other one too is you want to alkalize your body. First thing in the morning, you want to be also detoxifying your body. So when you wake up in the morning and you detoxify your liver and, and your gallbladder, and uh, the way to do that, you take a warm cup of water in the morning, you squeeze one-fourth of fresh lemon in there, and then you put in a pinch of cayenne pepper, a tablespoon of olive oil, you drink that every morning. That will detoxify you. But the other, let's go back then to ways to then strengthen your immune system. Now, 50 milligrams of zinc, when you have zinc, it won't necessarily prevent you getting sick, but it, it, it could cut substantially down, even by 50%, how long the illness will last. Zinc. Strengthening your immune system with elderberry. That'll strengthen your immune system. You will also strengthen your immune system with vitamin D. We're going to talk about getting your blood work. You want to get your blood work where your vitamin D levels between 50 and 80. If it's under 30, it's called abnormal they say it's normal if it's over 30, but you also need to understand the difference between optimal and normal. Optimal is 50 to 80. 100 is toxic. So you want to get a 50 to 80. So to do that, you want between 5 to 10,000 IUs every day of vitamin D. And when you're taking vitamin D, also, when you take these various substances, sometimes it throws other things out of, out of kilter. So you want to be taking vitamin K and vitamin A with that. You want to take vitamin K and vitamin A with that. And, and vitamin A, by the way, is also one of the ways of strengthening your immune system to help fight off any of these illnesses. And the vitamin K will also help you, your cardiovascular system to help make sure that the calcium that you get will go to your bones and not to your coronary arteries. You want calcium to go to your bones and not into your circulation system. You don't want to have calcified arteries. So when you're taking the vitamin A, that will help strengthen your immune system. You want about 25,000 units a day. So you're taking five to 10,000 units, I use international units, of vitamin D, you're taking 50 milligrams of zinc, you're taking elderberry, then you have echinacea, echinacea golden seal. Now, you don't want to take echinacea all year round, just when you're prone, just when you're being, you feel vulnerable or you're in an illness. You want echinacea and golden seal. You want both of those, echinacea and golden seal, strengthen your immune system. Now, also, certain mushrooms will strengthen your immune system, such as the reishi mushroom. What you want to do is uh, you want to be able to take uh, many of these. Some will be more helpful to certain people than others. When I feel prone to something happening, I, I take them all, plus some other ones as well. So the whole thing, this is the way to strengthen your immune system. Now, the other aspect is you need to know that you want to be detoxifying yourself. I told you one way to detoxify your liver and your gallbladder by that drink in the morning, the warm water with one-fourth lemon, and the, the uh, one pinch of cayenne pepper and a tablespoon of olive oil. Your yeah, detoxification is very available, very, very, very valuable. Now, what you also need to know is in addition to the supplements and the foods that we'll be talking about. Now, so that's to do with detoxification. Now, to achieve super health, you want to certainly help prevent cancers. 
Now, the king of the vegetables is broccoli. Broccoli prevents cancer. It's not only powerful antioxidants, it has calcium, it has so many nutrients in it, it actually helps prevent cancers. A good way to take it is steaming it. You can have it raw, but steaming it. The problem with having it raw is it could interfere with your thyroid function because it has what's called goitrogens in it. When you steam it, it neutralizes it. That's the king of all the vegetables. Now, some other cruciferous, cruciferous vegetables would include cauliflower, Jim Coy, uh, you have uh, cabbage. These are all well, excellent, but the broccoli is, is king to help prevent cancers. Now, to, there's a whole aspect of synergy. Certain foods and food supplements work synergistically and, and support each other. Radishes taken with the broccoli work synergistically with that. Now, the king of the fruit is pomegranates. The king of the fruit is pomegranate. You can have organic pomegranate juice, or you can eat the pomegranates. If you're going to juice a pomegranate, you can actually cut it. You can even do it with the peel, because the peel has it, the seeds. It all has tremendous nutrients in it. Let me tell you how powerful the pomegranate is. For one thing, it's good for your cardiovascular system and it's good to prevent cancer. We're going to talk about what's usually good for one system is good for everything. What's good for your heart is good for your brain. It just works. It helps your whole body. If a person has, let's say, a breast tumor, a cancer, a, a, a malignant tumor, breast tumor, or a, a prostate tumor, pomegranate will actually shrink it. Pomegranate and pomegranate juice will shrink it. You take the juice. You can also get it in pills. It has a more complete collection of the nutrients in it, but you want to take things whenever possible in the natural form and then use the supplements as well. Pomegranate will shrink it. Now, in, so that's super important. So you've got two ways of f preventing and fighting cancer. The other is cooked tomatoes. Now, tomatoes, unlike many things in life, you think raw is better, and very often that's true, but not with tomatoes. When they're cooked, it releases more of the lycopene and the lycopene actually deals effectively with cancer and helps prevent the cancers. So the cooked tomato will has so many health benefits, but you need to know this. And when I was talking about the pomegranate, it's very good also for the endothelial cells because the endothelial cells in your blood vessels dilate them. You want whatever will dilate your blood vessels. It's very important because that will lower your blood pressure. So you want to dilate those blood vessels. Uh, chocolate, for example, cacao, that will all dilate your blood vessels. See, the blood vessels, you have the connective tissue on the outside, then you have the, you have the uh, unscrited smooth muscle, and then you have the endothelial cells, which release the nitrous oxide that dilates the blood vessels. So you want to be able to dilate that. Magnesium will also dilate your blood vessels. So you have, you have many substances that will. Magnesium is one, pomegranate, Chocolate, cacao, which is what makes what's used for making chocolate. So you dilate the blood vessels, more blood, more nutrients, oxygen, and various nutrients can get to the heart and to the brain. Now, also if you're taking magnesium, there's a great benefit to that. Most people don't know this, but if a person had a, has sufficient magnesium, when they, if they did, God forbid, get a heart attack, there's less damage to the heart. If you're taking sufficient magnesium, there's less damage to the heart during a heart attack. It used to be during heart surgery, they would give intravenous magnesium. Some places might still do that. I may not be as universal as it was, but it actually cuts down the damage uh, to the heart tissue. It, it dilates the blood vessels, which is what you want. It also gives a protection to the heart. Now, in terms of the heart, and the same thing will apply to stroke. I mean, a stroke is basically like a heart attack to the brain, or you could say that a heart you could say a heart attack is like a stroke to the heart. I mean, it's the same process. What you have is plaque building up on the arteries, and then some of that plaque is stable, but some is soft and vulnerable. So if that ruptures, when the plaque ruptures, you get blood platelets congregating around that where it ruptured, treating the rupture as if it's a wound trying to stop the bleeding. Comes over there, treats it as a wound, and then when you get the blood platelets aggregating, you see it just forms a, a clump, what's called a thrombus, then it stops the blood from getting past that point. So it kills people or gives them a stroke. It's people's own blood platelets. 
congregating over there. So really, what you want to do, you, you, there's a number of approaches. For instance, there's uh, allopathic medicine uh, called Plavix, which keeps them from not being so sticky so they don't stick together if you do get a rupture, and that way you don't get that blockage. But certainly, you want to cut down your, your, your vulnerable plaque and reduce your plaque. Garlic will do that, particularly if you're taking the pills, which has more allicin in it. Uh, it will remove plaque. Now, you also don't want that soft plaque. You want it stabilized. So go to cola and pycnogenol will help stabilize the plaque, puts a coating around it so it won't break because it's the, it's the vulnerable plaque that ruptures that causes strokes and heart attacks. When you get ruptured plaque in the carotid arteries or in the brain, you have a, a stroke. If it's in the coronary arteries around the heart, you get a heart attack. So you certainly want to reduce, you, you want to reduce it. Now, garlic, as I said, will remove plaque. But so will lesser than granules that will take the plaque off. So you want to be reducing your plaque. You certainly want to do all you can to help prevent plaque from building up because cardiovascular disease is the number one killer. Second is cancer. So we'll be talking about those two major killers right now. So you want to uh, so remove the plaque. You want to prevent it from coming. And the way to prevent it, you want to, minim you don't, you want to minimize how you, your saturated fat. Some amount of saturated fat is good, but you want to certainly be reducing that. Now, you want to keep your cholesterol to healthy levels. You don't want it too, too low because that produces problems as well. You need cholesterol to manufacture many hormones and, and for, for building up your cell membranes. So, but, but if your cholesterol is under 150, and your LDL, which is a low-density lipoproteins, is under 80, it's impossible to build up plaque. Now, so you want to be keeping it down. There are certain allopathic drugs that will do that. Statin drugs like Crestor and Lipitor will do that. But the side effects of that, you're more prone to getting muscle aches or tendons breaking, potential problems with it. There's also a medication called easy to maybe even 10 milligrams, will help reduce the cholesterol um, and without those side effects. It doesn't reduce it as much, and it may not reduce your triglycerides. The statins will also take your triglycerides, which are fatty uh, molecules going in your bloodstream. But you can reduce your triglycerides with fish oil. Fish oil is one of the magic bullets you can take. You want to get, uh, usually they come to 1,000 milligrams. You can get salmon oil. You can get different ones. Or, anchovies, uh, many different type of oils that are used in that, mackerel and so forth. But salmon oil is a good one. And what it does is it reduces your triglycerides. It also gives you the omega-3s, the, the EPA, the DHA, which you, you need to, to live. It's very good for all, all your organs, very good for your brain. So you want to be uh, getting that fish oil. So, some of the magic things to take as supplements is fish oil and certainly eating salmon. Fatty fishes like salmon is, is a good way to get it. But the fish oil is really a good concentrated way to get it. So the, some of the magic bullets are the vitamin D that I told you and fish oil. Those two are just essential for, for everybody to be taking. And certainly you want to be getting your probiotics. So you want to then prevent plaque from building up. You want to stabilize the plaque, you want to remove the plaque. So these are the methods that I've told you about how to achieve that in a, in, a natural, in a natural fashion. Now in terms of thinning the blood, when the blood's thinned out, you're less likely to get that platelet aggregation. As I mentioned, uh, Plavix is excellent, but you have wafer and heparin, you have, you have many others that are used that are stronger. Uh, also aspirin will also help keep the platelets from getting too sti sticky. Of course, you need to talk to your doctor about all of these things we're using, but there's some natural ones that will thin out your blood, particularly natokinase, which is fermented, um, um, uh, it's, it's a fermented product that will, um, you can get it miso soup. It's, from, it, it's fermented soy, so it, it will thin out your blood. That natokinase is excellent. But this is, again, a natural way to do it. I should mention that fish oil and garlic does some thinning out of the blood as well. That's why if somebody's on Plavix or other allopathic medicines, 
that you have to be careful, you know, what the other ones you're taking. There was a time when I was on Plavix, but I still took those supplements and I, I, I wasn't bleeding. If you get a tooth thinned out, you can just stop bleeding into your, uh, into your organs and just go through your blood vessels. So, now, it's important that when you're taking food supplements, people used to say you are what you eat. You are what you eat. You might have heard that. That was a big saying years back. Well, it's not totally true. You are what you absorb. So you can take, you can eat a certain food or take a, a particular a food supplement, but if you don't absorb it, it's not going to help you. So there are certain technologies to make nutrients bioavailable, to make it bioavailable. One is fish oil. So you're taking the fish oil will make everything more bioavailable. For instance, let's say you take resveratrol. We're going to talk about resveratrol in a minute. It's more bioavailable if you're taking your fish oil. You want to be taking that fish oil. Very, very important. So you want, you want it to be something you can absorb and bring into your, into your whole body to get all the health benefits. There's so many really healthy foods. In terms of how you eat, you want to reduce or minimize how many processed foods you're having. You want to have a plant-based diet. I'm not saying don't eat meat. I'm just saying make sure you're getting a lot of plants. You want a lot of plants in your diet, and you want natural foods as opposed to processed foods. Now, most breads uh, will be like processed flours and whatnot. There's a bread called Ezekiel bread, which is sprouted grains. And I'm a world champion powerlifter and bodybuilder. That's the bread that we mostly eat as powerlifters and bodybuilders. So you want to be having natural foods. If something doesn't grow on a tree or you can't get it from the ground or it doesn't roam the earth, you don't want to be having that. I'm not going to say don't have meats. But certainly, if you're going to barbecue, you don't want to make it blackened. Because if you get it blackened, that becomes carcinogenic, and it can cause rectal cancer, colon cancer. You want to go easy on the amount of beef you have. Uh, that, that's a fact. But I'm not saying not to have it. Now, one product I can tell you that causes breast cancer and, and prostate cancer, and this shocks people because I grew up hearing that milk is, is the perfect food. Well, mother's milk is, no doubt about it. But the milk that we get, which has that casein protein from the cows and whatnot, that causes prostate cancer and causes uh, breast cancer. So you don't want to be having dairy products. I mean, once in a while, a little cheese or whatever, but you really don't want to have much of that. Now, when I was 65, I had prostate cancer. I used to drink a ton of milk. And that's a whole other story. But thank God we got it before it metastasized, and I've been fine ever since. So you don't want to be having Mary Price. You can have, and you don't want to have soy milk either. It's getting very mixed reviews. Almond milk, uh, you, might, you want to be considering that. Now, I also want to tell you this, that whenever any issue you have coming up, prevention is the best way to go. You want to have organic as much as possible. You don't want to be taking in pesticides into your body. So you want to be uh, certainly keeping the foods in a, in a, in a, in a healthy way. And, and certainly these meats, if you're going to have meat, you want grass-fed, uh, organic meat. You don't want it shot up with hormones and antibiotics. That's a problem. You're taking that into yourself. You're absorbing those antibiotics. And I will tell you this about antibiotics. If you have a, a pneumonia, you have some infection. Antibiotics are wonderful. It's a wonder drug. It really is. But what, you, but what you're not told off mostly by doctors, it's killing off the bacteria, okay? Won't kill viruses, but it will kill the bacteria. But it'll kill your natural probiotics that live within you. All the, all the uh, little microorganisms that we need, like I mentioned, the acidophilus, the bifidus, it's going to kill that. And you're going to be compromised. You, you'll be able to, yeast might start to grow or other harmful bacteria can start growing. You must make sure after you finish your probiotic treatment, you must make sure you take probiotics immediately afterwards. Because if you don't replace that, you're really in a compromised position. Very, very compromised. Now, when you're taking food supplements, you need to know that some of them work synergistically. Uh, for instance, as we get older, uh, and we're going to talk about aging. Aging is now considered like 
a disease. Uh, the work with David Sinclair, Dr. Sinclair out of Harvard, the new concept is aging as a disease. As we get older, we're more prone towards sarcopenia, muscle loss. Now, one thing that will help prevent that is HMB. HMB is a derivative of, of uh, L-leucine, and it works synergistically with vitamin D. So you take the vitamin D and you take that together. Just the way co coenzyme Q10, which is very good for your heart, and facilitates oxygen utilization. There are four amazing four that Dr. Sinatra talks about for the heart. He's a leading authority in natural health of the heart, an MD. And that's coenzyme Q10, L-carnitine, D-ribose, and magnesium. Well, you want to strengthen your heart with those. But what works, so you want to take HMB with the vitamin D, and the coenzyme Q10, you want to take it with selenium. Now, selenium will, in itself will prevent many diseases. You want to take the selenium pill, but also you can get it from Brazil nuts, but the pills are more concentrated form, and you can get various forms in, in, in a pill, like the one that Life Extension has a very good selection of everything. Excellent organization, Life Extension has great products. And it, the, the research on that shows that people have less sudden deaths from, from infarcts, heart attacks. From, it's just, you just have better longevity on, on, on this when you're taking uh, the selenium with your coenzyme Q10. Just like we talked about with, with, with food products, we're eating food, broccoli and radishes go together. Now, you also have in your body what's called senescent cells. Your, your, your cells divide, keep dividing, dividing, dividing. Then it gets to the point where they don't divide anymore. They're just old and dying. They're just dead cells. And you're really, it's called senescent. They give out pro-inflammatory molecules. So we're going to talk about inflammation and how dangerous that is. So you want to be able to remove those senescent cells. Well, if you take chorocetin with vitamin E with tocotrodols in it, it will help remove senescent cells. You want to be able to remove those senescent cells. Very important. Removal of senescent cells. And most people never even heard of that. So this is super, super important to do that. Now, what we're going to, so we're going to do now is, I'm going to, this was part one. Now I'm going to take one minute and we're going to go into part two. I'm Dr. Arnold Nuremberg speaking to you about super health, the physical, psychological, and spiritual dimensions.